Hello, good morning this Wednesday morning. So glad you have come back again for some more of the book of Ruth. That's where we go in a moment in our King's Daily. It's a lovely little book, so much to teach us how God's working out his purposes in the stuff of life, in, in the, the details of our lives, in the challenges of our lives. God can and does work out his purposes. So let's pray and see what the Lord has for us this morning. Lord, we love it when you speak to us. We love to hear your voice, to know your nudges, your leadings, your promptings. Lord, we want that more than ever. In these challenging days, we want to know your promptings. We want to stay close, close, close to you, hearing your voice when there's so many voices around us that might send us in all kinds of directions. So speak to us this morning, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, we, 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 we've been seeing the last couple of days that um, uh, this dear lady, Naomi, uh, her husband took her from the Bethlehem, house of bread, to Moab, the house of their enemies because of the, the famine and so on. Not a good move. They, they, they kind of... They'd just gone, they'd gone with the world, as, you, as it were. They'd, they'd, uh, God uses challenges to draw us closer to him, but for them it drove them away. Don't let the tough times drive you away from the Lord. May they drive you closer to him. In fact, this, you know, this whole theme of suffering, which we, we, we're touching on already, I mean, the three funerals we've heard of here, husband and two sons, it's suffering, it, it's an important theme for us to understand, both if we can un understand the, the people, people around us in the world, as well as understanding scripture. We know where, we, I mean, suffering all began way, way back, didn't it? You know, and everything was beautiful in the garden. And, and, and then, of course, the fall, we call it the fall. With suddenly, life's out of kilter because mankind refused to, to, to glorify God and put him at the centre and wanted to put ourselves at the centre instead. So it, it's a factor of life. But the beauty is God uses it for his glory. Okay, and it's such an important principle for us to get hold of. Yes, he's a wonderful healer and a wonderful deliverer. Yes, yes, more of that, Lord. But he also uses tough times. We saw on Monday, famine. God, we read in Deuteronomy, uh, he uses those things to, bring, to draw people back to greater dependence upon him. Self. And so he can use the tough things in our lives for his glory, to draw us closer to him. And to bring back people who perhaps have gone astray, the prodigals that have lost their way. We've been praying about that this week, haven't we? Okay, so here we are. We're now verse, um, uh, we are at verse 19 of chapter 1. So the two women, Naomi and Ruth, she's sticking with her. Where you go, I go. I'm, go, I'm sticking with you. This wonderful expression of loyalty and faithfulness. Beautiful. These, these, are, these are good godly qualities, aren't they? Um, they went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? What has happened? She's back. Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. Mara means bitter. Naomi means pleasant, and, and uh, Mara means bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. What a wonderful ray of light there at the end of that chapter. This dear lady, kind of repentant on her knees, I guess, you know, acknowledging, oh boy, that was not, that was not good. We didn't do well. Going there to, to Moab, going the way of the world, leaving the people of God. But some, somehow she didn't, 
you see, the big mistakes have been made, but something she, she was just holding on to, a, to the, the, the kindness of God. We've already read about the, the loving kindness of God, haven't we? We read about that earlier on. May the Lord show you kindness and have, uh, uh, and you, uh, and you, have, you've, as you have shown kindness to me. This, the kindness of God, and and she senses the kindness of God. So here she is, this dear lady. And she's sort of. On her knees, Lord, I don't deserve anything, but I'm looking to you. Do you know what? That's not a bad place to be. That's where the Christian life begins, isn't it? Empty-handed, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord, I don't deserve. But thank you that your grace comes to, comes to us as those who don't deserve, but who have been lavishly provided for and treated the, the the lavish grace of god and i love that last little word there they arrived in bethlehem the house of bread as the barley harvest was beginning oh what a lovely picture of the gospel the kindness of god of the church bethlehem house of bread oh god may it be said of our church and our churches it's a place where people are fed by the bread of life where there's there's sustenance not just good music and good coffee yeah let's have those as well but let's let's let it the house of bread a house where there's food for for the whole man the kindness of god they arrived in bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning now naomi had a relative on her husband's side a man of standing from the clan of elimelech whose name was boaz and Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone who, who, in, in whose eyes I find favour. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered the field and began to be, glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in the field that belonged to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters, the Lord be with you. That's a good godly man. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. Boaz, uh, Boaz asked the overseers of his harvest, who does that young woman belong to? The overseer replied, she's the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has ex and remained here for, uh, from morning till now, except for a short rest. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field. Don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting. Follow along after the women. I've told the men not to lay a hand on you. And wherever you go thirsty, and then whenever you're thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have now, there's something here for us. Boaz is actually a picture of a sort of kinsman redeemer. I can't, I'll talk about that maybe tomorrow time. It doesn't, doesn't allow. But the, what I notice here is she's received kindly. She's a Moabite. She's got nothing, got no rights or anything. And here this, this godly man, he receives her. Isn't that lovely? He could have just a, oi, off, go. What are you doing here? You've got no right to be here. He could have... He, he, he could have he could have been very different but she's she's received that just the, the kindness again this little book it, there's so so many beautiful things that come through and this dear guy i mean the way he treats people around him isn't it lovely you know the lord it, it, the lord be with you the lord bless you and so on this lovely godly greeting and and kindness being shown to someone an outsider with no rights who could have turned away I want to be like that, don't you? I want to be like that. In, you know, in, in, it, it can be very easy to, to judge people quickly, can't it? Perhaps the way they look, where they come from, whatever. God give us hearts that receive people, that, that want to bless people, that got eyes that, uh, that, that, that can, can see what God's doing around them. That we can be... God's hand and voice to those around us. We can be a blessing. The way this guy is going around blessing people. What a beautiful thing. God, I want to be like that. Lord, would you help us today? 
wherever we're going, help us not to be so busy and rushed that we haven't got time to slow down and see what you're doing around us. To, to greet, to reach out, to, to, to assist, to help, to, to, to bless. Lord, we, we, we want to be like that. This, this dear guy Boaz, he didn't have to do that. What a, what a beautiful thing. We want to be like that, Lord. We want to bring the grace of God to people in need around us. Please help us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, just about within 10 minutes. God bless. Have a great day and uh, hope you see us again tomorrow morning. Same time. Bye now.